You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. Never want the big one to happen, but you always got to be prepared. Of course. Never yeah. know. We're getting it's you ready here this today. morning, mm -hmm. absolutely. 6 a.m. on this Thursday. So glad you're waking up with us. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Netta Iran Porter. And we had that super moon, but yes. you can really see it. <laughs> yeah. The cloud coverage. Meteorologist Evan Arati joining us here. It is very much like that cozy weather yeah. where you just don't want to get off the couch yeah. as much. Oh, and <laughs> you might, if you do get off the couch and you're driving outside, mm. you might run into some drizzle, okay. some mist. So a uh, little bit of a different start to the morning commute out there. Dense layer of clouds with us from the coast, not only through our inland valleys, but to the western slopes of the mountains. And today, the difference is very similar to yesterday. We're not expected to see much of the sunshine, especially the farther west you are. 68 out along the coast, 71 inland. Mountains are going for 66 and 88 for the deserts. Ned and Eric, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Evan. A little cooler of a day. Uh, today, the CDC will interview people in the South Bay about possible health impacts from the sewage crisis. They want to know how the pollution is impacting you, your family. CBSH Regina Yarita live in Imperial Beach now with how this survey is going to work here. Regina? Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. And we do know that the CDC will be heading here to the South County. Uh, they're looking to door knock over 200 homes here um, and basically interview at random uh, people who have been experiencing uh, the effects of the sewage crisis here in Imperial Beach. Now, we did talk to Mayor Paloma Aguirre. Here's what she has to say about this. Very grateful to have the CDC's intervention down here. My understanding is it's the first type of assessment they've done in San Diego County um, ever, if not in a long time. And so Mayor Aguirre seems hopeful the assessment can paint a bigger picture of what's going on. Uh, she hears health complaints from residents on a daily basis. This includes reports of upper respiratory, gastrointestinal illness, asthma, chronic migraines, and chest pains. Right now, we still don't know the specific questions that will be asked, but we're told it will focus on changes in health and daily activities people may have experienced as a result of being exposed to the polluted water and air. So back out here today is the first a day of this assessment. Uh, CDC will be here in this area, but this plan actually runs uh, for about three days, so they will be taking surveys for about three days, and so that will be until Saturday. That's latest here in Imperial Beach. I'm Regina Rita, CBS 8. Oh, this morning, many fans are mourning the loss of former One Direction member Liam Payne, after he was found dead outside of a hotel in Argentina. Officials say the 31-year-old fell from a third-floor balcony in Buenos Aires. Police had received a 911 call of an aggressive man possibly under the influence. CBS's Jared Hill has more on what the ongoing investigation is revealing. Heartbroken fans lit candles outside the hotel in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where police found British pop star Liam Payne dead Wednesday. I'm shocked. I can't believe what is happening right now. The 31-year-old former member of the band One Direction died after falling from his hotel room on the third floor. Buenos Aires authorities told the Associated Press Payne had jumped from the balcony of his room just after 5 p.m. local time. They say police rushed to the hotel in response to an emergency call about an aggressive man who could be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. An autopsy is still being conducted. Liam Payne rose to fame in 2010 on the British singing competition series The X Factor, where he was placed with four other teens to form One Direction. You don't know you're beautiful. Blazing the charts with hits like What Makes You Beautiful and Story of My Life. We just see ourselves as a bunch of normal geezers having a good time, so very creaky chair there. When the group disbanded in 2016, Payne went on to try his hand at a solo career, though still often referencing his time with One Direction. As part of his solo show, he would show a little montage of One Direction performing, which is the kind of thing you don't do when you're starting out as a solo artist. Payne had been vocal about his struggles with alcoholism. His death is still under investigation. Jared Hill, CBS News. And now many celebrities are reacting to Payne's death. Paris Hilton said on X, so upsetting to hear the news of Liam Payne passing, sending love and condolences to his family and loved ones, RIP my friend. Music producer Zed wrote, I can't believe this is real, absolutely heartbreaking. 
And American musician Charlie Puth wrote, I am in shock right now. Liam was always so kind to me. He was one of the first major artists I got to work with. I cannot believe he's gone. Payne is survived by a seven-year-old son that he shared with fellow musician Cheryl. New this morning, a ban on homeless encampments is now in effect in National City. The city council passed the ordinance last month. It prohibits encampments on or near public property as well as within two blocks of schools in any waterways, trolley stops, and transit hubs. All right, folks, get ready to drop cover and hold on. Millions of Californians will take part in an earthquake drill this morning. CBS 8's Chris Grow live along Harbor Island to explain why we do the Great California Shakeout and how people can prepare for an earthquake. Important lessons to learn mm -hmm. today. Very important, and this is something that the state of California has been doing since about 2008, giving every single Californian at least one opportunity to go ahead and practice what to do in the event of an earthquake, but also another great reminder of what you're going to need to just have on hand in the case of any type of natural disaster. So let's, of course, start with what to do and what will be happening here at 1017 AM. It's as simple as drop cover and hold on. We are going to see millions of Californians taking part in this drill, including about a million here in San Diego County. That'll be happening at about 1017 AM and doing that for just about a minute. Uh, the Great Shakeout, of course, is an opportunity to practice this potentially life-saving life measure. Uh, they say that during a 7.8 magnitude or larger earthquake uh, that we would see devastation across uh, the San Andreas Fault. Some 2,000 people could potentially die, tens of thousands more injured, more than $200 billion in damage would result. In fact, they say that it would have 50 times the intensity of the 94 Northridge earthquake. So this is something that especially as we, the more years that you don't see something like this happen, they want you to be prepared in the event for when it does. Now, something else that this is a great opportunity to remind people about is what to do in the event of a natural disaster, to be self-sufficient, to make sure that you have enough water and food, to have a go bag ready. The idea here is that you want to have about a gallon of water per day for every member of your household. This is something that you can have ready for about 72 hours or more. Also, know where and how to turn off the gas in your home, including if you rent a home. Speak with your landlord, try to talk this out. Also, speak with the people that you live with in the case that you're separated when something crazy like this happens, that you have a plan and that you have a meeting spot at a safe location. Eric Canetta. Yeah, you can't plan enough for mm -hmm. uh, when that big one right. could come. Always right? having that to-go bag ready. I know in classrooms, yeah. a lot of uh, parents are, you know, sending those home with their, or just class with their kids. Super so. important. So yeah. get that app. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Download mm -hmm. it. Uh, if the kids are going to be spending time outside, I know sometimes when they do that, they then go gather outside yeah, at school, that's true. you know, right, find their right. meeting the spots. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a cloudy day out there. A lot of the kids that were being sent out to school yesterday were sent with a sweater, uh, absolutely a repeat of what we saw yesterday. Upper 60s out along the coast this afternoon, 71 inland. Cloud, cloudy skies are really going to hang on. Uh, satellite radar showing that they're stretching all the way to the western slopes of the mountains. Pine Valley has a good amount of cloud cover right now. Uh, what we're going to be seeing is that this cloud layer will absolutely pull its way back. Some of us will get some afternoon sunshine. That's going to be areas like Ramona and Lakeside, but it will probably rest right around the 15 or the 805, meaning that still a good portion of us will be left with the overcast skies for the duration of the day. Satellite radar pulling its view out all the way to Santa Barbara shows that it's the entirety of the bite with that mix of sun and clouds, or at least mostly cloudy skies. It's going to help to keep our temperatures this afternoon around that cooler than normal range. 68 for Santee and El Cajon, 66 for La Mesa, 64 for La Jolla. Notice how uniform these temperatures are. There is not much of a difference if you're in Carlsbad or if you're in Escondido. That's a rarity for us. We typically see that Areas like Escondido, Poway, Rancho Bernardo would warm up much more significantly than Carlsbad or uh, Solana Beach. But in this case, because of how dense that layer of clouds is, we aren't seeing much of a change. For the mountains and deserts, they're holding on to the 60s as well. Borrego Springs, though, 84. Ocotillo Wells, 87 this afternoon. On that inland five-day forecast, you can see how we're going to get a warming trend with a ridge of high pressure building. That'll help to take us to about average temperatures by this upcoming weekend. Friday and Saturday act as days of transition toward average. 
Let's take a look at traffic, how your roads are looking this morning. Right now, drive times outside are looking good on the 163 northbound and the 8 westbound Coronado Bridge. A little bit slower, 40 miles per hour out there. It's still only a three-minute commute from downtown to Coronado over the bridge. Take a look at border wait times. 60-minute wait at the San Ysidro Port of Entry, Otay Mesa Port of Entry. Also, just 60 minutes, an hour both. Back to you.